Minneapolis, that fast-growing nerve center of America's great Northland Empire, the City of Lakes, the All-America City. Much of this city's exciting progress is reflected in the design and heritage of its buildings, but few the nation over have received the attention of the ever-famous Fauché Tower. But who was Fauché? Into the growing 1916 community of Minneapolis arrived Wilbur Burton Fauché with a borrowed $6,000 and a dream for success. In a few short years, the young W.B. Fauché Company would rapidly become an international leader, operating and financing public utilities and a variety of industrials. There were over 70 holdings in 23 states and five foreign countries, valued at over $29 million. Now, Fauché could realize a dream. The construction of a building to house his vast empire, to be designed in commemoration of his boyhood idol, George Washington. So, in 1926, began the plans for the Fauché Tower. Within a year, a downtown site on 9th Street and Marquette Avenue was chosen. Construction began of the 32-story steel and concrete structure shaped like the Washington Monument. For the first time in the history of the Northwest, union labor was used exclusively, creating the only building whose design was ever patented in the Library of Congress. Soon the eyes of the nation would be focused on Minneapolis and this building. When asked why he selected Minneapolis for his tower, Mr. Fauché replied, This is truly a great city. A city with an unlimited business, civic, and cultural future. In a few years, it will be known the world over as an established leader. It's my home and the city I love. A dream is realized. In the late summer of 1929, the Washington Memorial of the Northwest is completed. On August 30th, the elaborate three-day dedication started. crowd of 50,000 attended. Notables from every state and many lands, led by United States Secretary of War, the Honorable James W. Good, personally representing President Herbert Hoover. Minnesota Governor Christensen officially hosted dignitaries from throughout the world. Featured during the dedication events was the world-renowned John Philip Sousa, March King who rode a march in honor of the Great Tower. This day saw the unveiling of three busts of Washington, created by the famed American sculptor Hiram Powers. In the garden court, a nymph named Scherzo was unveiled and lovely maidens of 1929 danced around the nymph and the courtyard. Inside his tower, Fauché had art treasures from the world over. Marble from Italy, mahogany from Africa, gold leaf decorations, many of which were in Fauché's own private office high up on the 27th floor. The celebration, as Fauché hoped it would be, was reported as an international event. Thursday, October 29th, 1929. A big crash. The stock market fell, and Fauché's empire toppled with it. His personal and business resources were depleted. 
To provide an income for his family, Fauché moved to Salida, Colorado, where he managed a granite company. But Fauché's troubles had only begun. In addition to the loss of his company, the federal government in 1932 charged Wilbur B. Fauché and several former company executives on 17 charges of mail fraud. The Fauché trials were to rock the country. Newspapers from coast to coast carried the account. The two trials lasted for over five months. Fauché was found guilty and convicted on four of 17 counts of mail fraud. He was sentenced to 15 years at Leavenworth Federal Penitentiary. All was not lost. Thousands of citizens who still believed Fauché innocent bombarded President Roosevelt with pleas for executive pardon. Roosevelt listened, and after three years of prison, Wilbur Fauché's sentence was commuted. And when Mr. Truman became president, he granted Fauché a full and unconditional pardon, clearing his name. From the time Fauché left prison in 1937 until his death at the age of 76, Wilbur B. Fauché, a man and his memory, lived quietly, a productive citizen promoting the communities in which he worked and lived. Though the man is forgotten by the world, the tower that bears his name stands as a unique memorial, a symbol of the glory of that day when its dedication was news around the world and was immortalized by John Philip Sousa's stirring Fauché Tower Washington Memorial March.